everyone, this is John Light here at Evermite, and I've got Legend and Eunice here, who are professional data analysts that uh, do a lot of consulting and work for a lot of marketing agencies. And uh, we're doing another session of questions and answers because um, some of our clients and our audience have asked us a few more questions. Uh, so one of the questions that's been asked is, um, okay, so it's here. Data silos is a challenge in our industry and can make it difficult to perform insightful data analysis. Uh, is there a trend uh, to eroding these barriers uh, between all these silos? And what does it look? What does the landscape look like in 2018 when it comes to data silos? Uh, so that's the question. Um, and I guess I'll uh, give a quick definition of what you know data silos means uh, in our industry. Uh, so the idea is that uh, in a lot of large not just large, but I would say even small to medium-sized uh, businesses, when you have different departments and different divisions, they might start to house or track their own customer or any kind of information uh, independent of each other. So maybe the marketing department will start having a database of, um, of customers and contacts that they, uh, that they have in their database, and uh, the sales team might have a separate uh, database and no one really has a consolidated view of all the data that they have within uh, the business. So uh, this makes it difficult yeah. to do some data analysis. So uh, that's kind of the rough uh, definition. And I'm curious, Legend, you might have some ideas on that? To add to your point, silos are also mostly created because of uh, teams using separate products or platforms to house their data. So it's not just created by departments, but it's also created by different products that don't necessarily talk to each other. So the way data grew was such a matter that uh, products grew by itself first before having a consistent uh, idea around integration or a consistent structure around uh, or standards around how data should talk to each other or come together and integrate it. Now, if you think about internet, internet technologies and internet, internet, uh, tech, uh, the, the network was created first from a, a platform point of view and then technologies came around it. So the infrastructure was there first and technologies came around it. So it was easy for them to connect and talk to each other where in terms of, in, in terms of data, it's, it's the other way around. So different products create data which sits around in silos and with different departments uh, and business functions, and they don't often talk to each other. Silos are often created. Yeah, and I think that makes sense. Uh, uh, I, I realize that there's, I believe there's a lot of different ways that could cause these data silos. So we already mentioned to the fact that there are different divisions, then there's different products. I believe sometimes for legal reasons, um, uh, you might need to store the data separately. And you need to go through a very rigorous process to uh, extract that data, not just from a technical or manual labor perspective, but also from just getting the legal, uh, uh, getting through the legal paperwork just to extract that data. Um, right. So I guess there are a lot of different reasons for why this data uh, gets siloed. Um, so that's kind of the problem. I mean, Eunice, do you have any other thoughts around that? Uh, around how data silos kind of come up? I think also what we've seen is um, because a lot of different agencies will pitch their kind of solutions to their data, uh, the company's data problems, they'll always come up with their solutions too. And then those solutions don't really talk to each other as well. Like they could be tool sets, it could even be just the way that they use the data in the first place. They, one agency might want to use data in a certain manner, and then when they move to the next agency, they uh, pitch a different solution and say that that solution is better. And then when they integrate from one solution to the next, even though, say, for example, it might just be web data at the end of the day, when you're moving from one to the next, because the metric is not always the same, you're also going to have different data points as well. So that will create a disconnect between the data points and create another data silo as well. Yeah, yeah and I think that uh, all makes, uh, yeah, that's all very insightful, like feedback into how these arise. Uh, I talked with this person actually asked this question before, and um, this person was very inspired by, by a lot of lectures and I, I suppose a lot of conferences uh, from several years ago when you know, big data and you know like Adobe Premiere is like pitching all these like new features on different ways to you know really uh, do your data visualization and you know, do a lot of your analytics. And back then there's all this talk about 
you know, it, it was a really big hype with like data sciences uh, at that time. It's, I, I know data science has been around for a long time. Um, it's just that with the, a lot of technologies that have been come available, people just seem to talk a, talk a lot more about it back then. And then it's just these data silos just proved a really big challenge, right? Even like, you know, for our team, um, you know, just putting in the legwork to extract the data out of all these different silos and create a consolidated or confederated database of this stuff, it's just a lot of work. And, um, you know, through a lot of these uh, conferences, like this person was saying, in the future, you know, the, all these data silos, like the, the barriers between all these silos we wrote, um, I, I'm just curious if you think that's even a possibility or if you see any trend in that direction, uh, here's what thoughts you guys might have in that respect. So well, uh, big brands have understood uh, the issues around data integration and they're definitely moving in the direction of bringing more integration and more, uh, for the lack of a better word, let's say connected devices. Uh, in terms of integrating all of this data together. And that is, again, an overused word, what connected devices is. But think of just connected platforms that can all talk to each other, tech platforms and all of that. So uh, a lot of brands are taking steps to bring a lot of their products together such that they can easily integrate and talk to each other. So when I say big brands, think about Google, think about uh, Adobe. So they're already building brands, uh, building products that are all integrated and within one ecosystem. Uh, uh, even on watching CES, uh, I was uh, one of the main attractions of the show was basically Samsung as well as LG. They had both of their own uh, specific strategies on how they are going to approach this. So Samsung had a pretty much of a uh, in, they're going to build all products in-house kind of a strategy where LG was taking their products then then working with Google and Alexa to kind of integrate it that manner. So there are either partnerships or collaborations uh, or each individual big brand standing up for themselves to kind of bridge the gap. And I think that was one of the key things this year. It wasn't just about products, but it's also about integration so that they can talk well to each other. So they're they are heading in that direction. Are we there yet? No. Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like it's not something that just happens naturally. Like technology itself is a little bit of an of an enabler. It won't, but it's still a very conscious and uh, uh, devoted effort from not just brands. I would say any business. You have to have that strategy in mind to integrate all your data and to actually and to execute it it's actually effort it just won't happen um so it, that's what it sounds like from what you're saying yeah and with smaller brands i would say the once they understand that this is a huge problem you, you, you could start off on the right foot and kind of ensuring that the platforms and the processes are in place to ensure that the data is integrated when you begin working on it. And there are, there are specific standards in place so that most of the data is well, uh, well uh, connected. Uh, that would be much better from a strategic point of view moving forward because once you introduce a lot of hygiene issues in the data, more of a harder job to cleanse that and then bring it back together. Yeah, makes sense. Eunice, do you have any uh, uh, additional thoughts to add to this? I think like a lot of big companies in this year, like in the past year and in the upcoming year, data integration is definitely something they're investing into. But another thing that they should look beyond just having the data integrated in one place is also how do they integrate that data? Is that data useful? And the way that they integrate it, is it useful information or is it just you're collecting lots of data? because you could collect lots of log data, but it's not useful, or you're, create, you're collected in a manner that you can't really use it for any other purposes. So you could just be collecting a lot of data, but is it in a useful manner for you to actually utilize it is another question that people need to think about more. And definitely, I think if in companies really want to invest into act, having data that's actionable, they need to have a department that not only thinks about data integration, but also data quality, and then also using that data in a certain manner as well. So analytics and data is definitely needs to be integrated together and also needs to have a good understanding of both sides of not just data, but also how to utilize it. Right, and I think to that point, it's uh, I've seen situations where um, you know, a certain 
companies, and these are smaller and medium-sized guys, uh, that they're collecting a lot of information, uh, but when they're trying to consolidate this and they're trying to come up with data strategy or let's say create a separate staging area uh, to house this data that makes it more accessible, they don't, um, it, they don't know exactly what data they want to pull out of it. And again, they just pull out a lot of stuff, which then becomes too much of a, it's too much noise, which kind of defeats the purpose. Um, but I, I would say, like that. oh, sorry. Yeah, so what I would say is uh, from a data collection point of view, no data is useless data because uh, it's just us uh, knowing how to use it. Data is data. Uh, it's information. Uh, well, data is data. It's not information yet. But it's about us um, understanding what's the best use of even transactional or processing log data. Sometimes it cannot be practically a lot useful from a business impact point of view, but maybe it can improve your server performance times by one millisecond. Who knows? And maybe that will affect your e-commerce store performance. So storage-wise, collect everything, store everything, whatever possible. But from a practical usage point of view, that is where an experienced analyst comes in and say, OK, a lot of this is practically not useful at this point of time. Let's see how we can make use of this. So that comes with, you know, it, it goes back to you understanding what your key business requirements are at this point, what your big KPIs are, what your goals are, and then trying to uh, utilize this in a manner that actually helps you with that goal. But from a storage point of view, I'd say collect everything, log everything that you can. Uh, possibly do. Right, yes, and um, you're definitely right. Uh, I was speaking from perspective of like a, the implementation or technical side, uh, and really, yeah, sometimes we don't really know exactly, okay, how is this data going to be used? Do you really need it? And then we kind of question, well, do we need those? We spend so much more time optimizing certain queries and optimizing certain things that, um, but yeah, what you said is definitely right. Yeah, I mean, there, there is a fine line to draw for sure. I mean, so as to not, you know, trying to go after everything that's out there. Yeah. Well, okay. So, um, yeah, that's the question on data styles. I'm wondering if there's any other uh, uh, extra thoughts you guys want to have uh, add at this point. Um, I think on top of data silos, it's kind of important to like, after you've integrated all the data, like how you document it as well so that other people can utilize it. Because what we've seen in different clients is like some of them are, are really great at collecting data, but they don't really put that data in a format so that other people can understand what's even in the data in the first place. Yeah. So then you're just collecting a huge bank of data and nobody can use, use it because they don't even know what's available. Yeah. And this is a problem that plagues huge brands, big brands, small brands, all of them, like uh, usability. So uh, when you're collecting data in a heap and it's just stored in a pile, it, uh, the usability of it diminishes because you don't know what's in there, right? So it, it sounds like a you know, simple, silly problem, but when the data sets are huge and there's a lot of different sources that is driving into it with huge variety of data and volume of sources, you kind of need to to it. And uh, I mean, um, hygiene and structure is one thing, but even talking about integration, I think now that we are having more conversations and more of a drive around integration, uh, it also raises questions and talks about how to integrate them, levels of integrating them, how to merge them, because integration is an easy word to use, but practically when you think about merging identities or merging different things, there's a lot of, uh, uh, right now there is, everybody has as a proprietary algorithm, how they does it. There are some best used practices, but I think there is a good scope for industry-wide uh, standards to be set up in terms of these are the best ways in which you can consolidate or merge uh, specific things to data integration. So I think that opens up a lot more uh, uh, good uh, questions to solve. Mm -hmm. from the data yeah, and I, I think based on that, you basically presented two more questions that I feel like we can tackle in a separate video. One is uh, how to make data usable, and then um, you know the different levels and different ways of do doing data integration. Well, actually, that one sounds like it's a very broad topic, but I feel like it's something that we can cover uh, in upcoming sessions.